A good ride by Harry White, he had him across about three wide up the side and uh, went to the lead on the turn and hung on very well to win. It's a good effort for a horse to win with 60 kilos around the valley. Yes, he's one horse that uh, you know seems to handle it quite well there, but as you say, uh, pretty, pretty good first up effort. Um, I don't think uh, we have uh, much of a pointer, as I say, to our races. There's none of those horses going to come over, I think. But we probably got a couple of good pointers yesterday from Cheltenham in uh, the shape one in Spartan Queen, John. Uh, must have a, a good chance in the Christmas going on that win yesterday. Well, Bert, I think she, she is a Cheltenham specialist and 60 kilos on her back. I followed her all the way yesterday and uh, uh, she was giving me something like eight kilos and uh, well, she just beat my horse out of sight and was too good all the way. And, even coming to the home turn, she was travelling beautifully in the lead and uh, I never looked like beating her and uh, she must be a great chance in the race and, and Len Smith's got a good hand, second hand in um, uh, yeah. Law. His was a good run and uh, I think he's a horse that I think Len stayed in the press this morning, he doesn't like the whip and, and it seemed when Peter Shepherd hit him with the whip he, uh, he curled up a little bit under him but uh, now that you know these little traits with these horses, well, uh, you know, you can work on them and... Mm. Uh, but he must be a chance in the race too, because he likes Cheltenham. Yes, although I've got a slight doubt whether he's quite seasoned enough for the uh, for a race like the Christmas in, in a you know capacity type field. I feel that he is just probably still a little bit uh, was green, not the word probably, but he just doesn't race quite as generously as yet. Uh. But I think he might be a little bit close to uh, Spartan Quinn. The weights too. She's on 52 and a half, and he's on 50 and a half. And I think that she around Cheltenham, she's a much uh, she's a better horse than two kilos than him. Mm. And uh, she, I think she'd be too good for him around the track, but. Uh, it's nice to go into the race like that with two horses that have got good chances, isn't it? You know, like and well weighted for the race. Yeah, it certainly is. I wonder what effect it's going to have uh, if uh, Spartan Queen wants to lead and Asha Mossel wants to lead. Now, it's probably not going to help either of them. No, but this is where it, uh, where the barriers are going to play play a big uh, part in the mm. Christmas handicap. Over the years, the statistics show that inside of about barrier eight has got a very good record in the Christmas handicap. You seem to get in uh, without any trouble and. Uh, it's always a good run race, the Christmas handicap, but the horses that draw inside seem to have a good run through the race. And if you get a horse like Alsha Mossel draws barrier one, gee, it's going to be a big advantage, mm. isn't it? Or Spartan Queen draws one, she's yeah. going to have the advantage. But so there again you go, if, if one draws good and one draws bad, well, the one that draws the best is you know, going to have the best run of the race, I think. Yes, that's where the barrier draw is going to be very important there. Not quite so much uh, for a big feature sprint, say, at Morfordville, where... You know, even if you draw out wide there, you're still not out of business, say, in the 1200. Well, I think the outside gate at, uh, at Morfordville is a better better barrier but than on the inside. I've won uh, what, four Goodwoods and I think, uh, well, Marlborough Plates are now, and I've drawn the outside barrier three times. Mm. And it's got a very good record there. And uh, But you, you get a horse uh, like Alsha Mossel, gee, from barrier one, you know, like he's just going to jump a length clear of the field, isn't he? Mm. And he's been able to, be, uh, able to just go along and just rate the race the way he wants it, run Young Tootle. And, uh, mm. Uh, because he travels well for that little apprentice and yeah. uh, they, they are a good team at the moment and they're unbeatable. They're not just winning races, they're winning by four or five lengths and That's running right. time. Yes, he's riding very well and he's quite a vigorous young uh, rider too and uh, as you say, he seems to uh, suit the horse. Uh, incidentally, uh, don't forget the, the way things are next Friday and Saturday. Friday at Cheltenham is uh, Yolumba Port Cup Day and Saturday is the Christmas Handicap. Uh, I think once upon a time the Christmas always used to be uh, before the Port Cup, but uh, it has been run that way a few times, and not why I'm not quite sure, but it, it's that way again this year, the Yolumba Port Cup on the Friday and the Christmas Handicap on Saturday. And if you're going on Saturday, you'll have the chance in the Pick the Card uh, competition, if you can pick the seven winners, if there happens to be a seven event program, if you can pick the seven winners, $50,000, or it will be shared, of course, if there's more than one, but um, entries uh, on the course there, and there will be entry forms available in all enclosures, so don't forget to enter the Pick the Card contest, only seven winners, not too hard, John. Well, Bert, if they listen to you Saturday morning, they might be able to get a bit of a guide on it. But uh, I think you get your entry form, one per person as you walk in the gate, mm -hmm. and uh, study them up a bit Friday night and just have a $50,000 a good prize, isn't it? Well worth trying And it doesn't for. cost anything to enter. That's right. OK, let's go to Mooney Valley uh, first, and uh, we'll be back uh, then to discuss the program at Shelton. But let's go to the Valley, and the first event yesterday, the Hollymount Handicap. Teddy Hilding around the outside, then Bonhost making ground in the centre, followed further back by River Amber, but Mr Spectacular and Lord Marne together on the point of the turn. Mr Spectacular got away a half length now, and Lord Marne, who's hanging in third placing, Bonhost followed by Lunar Eclipse, Hilding racing greenly, then Star Teddy, Mr Spectacular in front, halfway down the straight from Lord Marne, Bonhost getting home, and Hilding right down the outside, Mr Spectacular in front. Bonho's getting to it near the line though. Although racing greenly, Bonho's got up to win by a neck to Mr. Spectacular. Maybe Lord Marn third, just ahead of Hilding. The winner Bonho's at nines, Mr. Spectacular two's favourite and Hilding got third at 33 to one. In the second race, it was High Century favourite from St. Honora.
but St. Honora is travelling well. Devonna putting in a run. Megan Lass looking for somewhere to go, and so is Bon Curly. St. Honora 300 out on the corner, doing it well. Led by more than a length now from Devonna and Lady Dumbrell. Back behind them, then, family of star Bon Curly can't get out. Uh, halfway down the straight, it's still St. Honora holding them at bay. Devonna running on pretty well, but St. Honora is much too good. A clever ride, Highland. Wins two lengths to Lady Dumbrell, ahead to Devonna. Megan Lass next. Bon Curly had no luck in the run behind them from Family of Star and Open Sound. And the winner, St. Honora, 13 to 4. 16 is Lady Dumbrell and 33 to 1 Devonna. The third race and the first good thing looked upon in the day was by now at 13 to 8 the turn they've kicked away two lengths to Susano on the inside of Derby Magic Golden Song trying to get out in the straight by now took the lead quickly and drew away from Princess Warren Golden Song's running on fairly well from Derby Magic but by now has got a big break it'll be too good Golden Song running on well but by now goes down to the line to win by two lengths to Golden Song second four lengths away third would be Derby Magic in front of Princess Warren Stetson star Susano and the winner by now, 13 to 8 favourite. Good run, Golden Song at 20s and Derby Magic third at 16 to 1. The Yuletide handicap, the favourite, Centra Bricius. On the turn, a half Centra Bricius, the Hercules going well, can't get out. They're followed by Society Man and then Bo Yang from Azan. In the straight, Viv's Choice, a length clear of Centra Bricius, the Hercules looking the danger, trying to get a run. In the straight, Viv's Choice, the leader, the Hercules getting out now, going after it with Centra Bricius. It's Viv's Choice uh, interfering with the uh, Hercules, but Viv's Choice is going on a win. A length to Centra Bricius, ahead to Sir Hercules, might have been something beaten third. The winner of Viv's Choice at sixes, Centra Bricius at 11 to four, favourite and Sir Hercules 16 to one. The fifth race, the favourite fill proof, but there was a big plunge on French gown. Getting a split and five, four hook to the outside with Lady Safarine coming home and Tiara Bangle from a long way back. Near the turn, Stedemink in front, but about to be tackled by French gown, who looks to be travelling okay. How good's third, then Tiara Bangle, followed by Lady Safarine, Firefall and Frida's Joy. But around the turn, French gown took the lead from Stedemink. In third placing is How Good, followed by Tiara Bangle and Lady Safarine. But French gown's going to be much too good, and French gown comes away near the line to win by about three lengths. Good go for for the miners, Tiara Bengal on the outside got up to get second just ahead of Stedemink. Then came How Good from Lady Safarine. Very poor run by the favourite foolproof at twos was never in the race. The winner, French Gown, back from fours to nine to four. In the grandstand handicap, the favourite Ghost Dancer at nine to four. I don't think's in it today. He's coming home, but a long way back. On the corner now, just a boy. Chance landing. Raspadora tackling the leader. Ghost dancer hook six deep. Danish seven wide and then attack. In the straight. Gallant Specter tackled by just a boy, but Ghost Dancers grabbed them quickly. Danish the outside. Ghost Dancer sprinted to the lead halfway down the straight and he's drawing right away. Ghost Dancer goes on to win easily. About two and a half lengths. Close for the miners between Danish and attack. Nearly a dead heat for second. Gallant Specter next from Grey Specter. And the winner there, Ghost Dancer, 9 to 4 favourite, one well from Danish and Attack. The seventh event, and the good thing of the day, was supposed to be Manipal. Four lengths still to Prancer, above the stars battling on, Tetranate's gone. Manduria and Gowan are both running on, and then Sky Castle and Popper Prince. 300 out, and Manipal still three lengths in front, though. Second, Prancer's under pressure from above the stars. Manduria looking for runs, battling on well. Manipal hung on the turn, two lengths in front, halfway up the straight, holding the Prancer at bay. He's getting very tired, Prancer's pegging him back, and then Manduria, Manipal stopping. He's got enough in hand, and Willits has landed the double. Manipal's won it, nearly a length to Prancer and Man. Duria, then Gowan, Popper Prince, Sky Castle, Durham Towns. And the winner, Manipal, 6 to 4 on and favourite. The second last on the program, and Grey Sapphire, despite his 60 kilos, was a hot favourite. Minos. Here's Nordiger with a strong run wide out, but Grey Sapphire under his big weight clear. Nordiger running on strongly from Equatorial and Minos. Grey Sapphire in front, halfway down the straight. Nordiger's not picking it up, and Grey Sapphire, hard ridden, hanging onto the lead, and he'll win. Great win to Grey Sapphire with his big weight. Three quarters of a length to Nordiger, a good run again. Equatorial third from Minos, Man Marty. And the winner, Grey Sapphire, 11 to 8 favourite, Nordica 13 to 4, Equatorial 7s, so to the last. Praiseworthy got right through to join Einstein in the lead at the 400. On the outside of them is Woking and two lengths to El Cozon, who's under pressure and struggling. Then Solven, Sol, uh, on the inside, Sovereign Roll. Prime Question got a bad check. On the turn into the straight and out wide on the track, Woking has taken a narrow lead from Praiseworthy and Einstein. They're followed by El Cozon and Scipio coming with a big run. Woking hanging out rather badly. He's in front halfway down the straight, however. Scipio and Tamley Express finishing well and Praiseworthy still there. 
but Woking's in front and wins. Woking by a length and a quarter to Praiseworthy, Scipio third, Tamley Express fourth, then... And the winner Woking at 12 to 1, Praiseworthy 5, Scipio 12, favourite Alcoves on 9 to 4. The doubles... Melbourne double yesterday, six ghost dancer and one grey sapphire, 435, and six ghost dancer and two Nordica, 245. And uh, that was racing yesterday at uh, Mini Valley. Some quite uh, good performances there from uh, a couple of uh, first up horses and uh, Manipal continuing on with its winning form. It looked as though it had uh, just about had enough on the line there, but it was a clever ride by Gary Willits. He sort of burnt them off, John, and uh, then held it together to win quite nicely, really, at the finish. Yes, Bert, and uh, I think Roy Higgins did the same on him at uh, Flemington last start mm -hmm. um, with this horse Manipal, but I thought a good run in the race was uh, Manjuria, the horse from here. Yes. That was a good run, and uh, he's only been length away on the on the line, and uh, there's sure to be a race around the corner for him shortly. I notice uh, in Bill's call too, harking back to yesterday, that he was uh, held up slightly for a run around the turn, I think, so it was probably a fair effort. Yes, but and, and you know yourself, like Mooney Valley, if you're in front and you're going along with it without any interference or anything, you get back in the field and you get back in the pack and you can't get a run, it's only a short straight, 200 metres, and uh, it's hard to you know, run over the top of horses in that short time. Mm -hmm. Although it is amazing the number of horses that do come home fast there at the valley. It's it's quite deceiving. It's quite a short straight. But as you know, John, um, if you ever go down to the home turn and look at the winning post, it's uh, like climbing a little minor hill, isn't it? And some of the weak horses just don't get up there. No, well, the th I think the secret of the valley, Bert, is if you can start to wind up at the school. Mm. This is where all the jockeys make their run from the school. And if you're out wide and you start your horse running about 600 metres from home and you get him wound up and going to the turn, and you're going to that home turn mm. at your top speed, well, you've got a chance of finishing fast down the outside. But if you're held in a pocket and you have to get out from that pocket and then sprint home quickly, then it's hard because the leader mm. seems to get a bit of a break on you. But yeah. if you can get wound up out wide and you start your horse racing quickly, um, you can see Ghost Dancer, he was held up for a while and Gary Willops uh, sort of worked it out that he had to be out, so mm. he pushed his way out and wound him up and, and he, he ran over the top of those other horses and won. But that's the secret of riding at the valley. Yep. No, that was a very good win too by Ghost Dancer and it should uh, probably win again on that run. Okay, so much for racing at Mooney Valley yesterday. We'll be back in a moment with all the uh, pointers for the Yolumba Port Cup and the Christmas handicap from Cheltenham yesterday. And Smith's good people to do with and Smith's good people to see Smith's Electric Supermarket on Norwood Parade has the biggest range at the best prices. See them first. All the leading brands, stereo systems, home appliances, colour TV and much more. Ern Smith's have their own finance too, so you can buy on easy terms if you wish. For quality, service and value, Ern Smith's, good people to see. How often have you wished that somebody you know could be rewarded for exceptional effort on Australia's behalf? Well, now it's possible. Project Australia is looking for nominations for its Advance Australia Awards. These awards recognise outstanding contributions to the advancement of Australian lifestyle in any field, community service, sport, arts, science or industry and commerce. Now there must be many people who deserve such recognition. If you know anybody, pick up an Advance Australia Award nomination form from any of these centres. Nomination form available in the Advertiser on Saturday 20th of December. Racing yesterday at Cheltenham opened with the West Lakes Handicap and uh, I think we saw a pretty uh, smart youngster uh, in vain, Papa. Uh, John, uh, you rode in the race but couldn't get anywhere near them on, on Power Girl, but this one, uh, the first hunk of Papa, uh, one to win here in South Australia, obviously is very smart. I think he's a very good horse, Bert, and he, uh, yesterday he won very easily, and I had a look at him going to the barrier, and then after the race, he, he is a magnificent two-year-old, and uh, gee, he could go a long way, this horse, and now that the hunk of Papa's have broke through, he's out of a good mare too, Bert, Vanity, she could run... Yeah. And, and she, could uh, along, oh, she, she was very fast and she was a vain filly and uh, but this this colt he looks like being very good i was very impressed with him yesterday yeah, i noticed the uh, hunker puppers have had i think one win in western australia and they had a couple in sydney hunker lady's been a little bit disappointing in sydney but i think there's one they're called hunker girl which is uh, coming along quite well so uh, looks as though uh, before very long we'll be hearing plenty more about the hunker puppers and no doubt they've got uh, quite a few of them in the sale this year I think they've only had about six runners, so it's been quite good, really. There was a, there was some at Morfordville, but there was a couple at Morfordville that were going very well before they went Shinsaw, and, mm. uh, you know, like now they've been turned out for Spill and brought back. Uh, I think we'll see a lot more of the hunk of puppers. Yep. Uh, it's going to be interesting, the um, British Cooperative sale this year, too, uh, with... Uh, uh, some of the ones that did well last year and also some new size, uh, it's going to be a terrific sale. They've got about 632 yearlings to be sold. Take it's a long time to sell them, Bert. <laughs> it will. Well, they're starting on Saturday night <laughs> yeah. with the special debutante uh, yearlies uh, yeah, 
Philly sale and then on Sunday continue at 9 and then on Monday about 9.30. And then if you're not uh, satisfied with that, Del Gettys then take over, I think it's started at 7 o'clock on the Wednesday night at the showground, so there's plenty of horses going to be sold. All right, let's go to Cheltenham anyway and have a look at uh, the very good win of uh, Vain Papa by the Maluna stud uh, stallion, Hunker Papa. Ten on the inside, and his Vain Papa looming on the scene and putting the nose quickly in front of the 250. They're followed by Double Fran being switched around them from Scarpanto and Castle Roy, but Vain Papa running about a bit, but it's quickly got to the front and looks to have it well won. And this is going to give Hunker Papa his first win here in South Australia by the look of it. And Vain Papa races down the line to win it easily, about four lengths to Double Fran, third bit of tan, then Thornton. He's a nice action cult, John. Yes, Bert. He drew barrier 10 yesterday, which, which was against him, and uh, yeah. I can't take anything away from him. There was no unlucky horse was in that race. He's just too good. Yes, yeah, so was, uh, the impressive part was when he went to the front in the straight. He didn't do too much on him coming to the turn, but he certainly killed him in the straight. This is race two, the uh, Yuletide Handicap. White. They're followed then by Lavadina from Milano Bell, Tipperary, Tim and Malahat Mountain into the straight and Court Sabre on the inside. May have his nose in front of Military Rail, but Regal Contenders immediately shot to the front. Uh, Dawn Command out after it with Gallivant on the outside, but at the 200, Regal Contenders about two lengths in front of Court Sabre. Uh, Gallivant on the outside, uh, Dawn Command and Regal Contender and Lavadina coming home when it's all over on the outside, but Regal Contender in front and it'll win. Regal Contender a length. Oh, there's a fall. Court Sabre's down about 30 yards from the line, but Regal Contender beat Gallivant and um, Lavadina, then Dawn Command. From... That unfortunately was the tragic end of uh, Court Sabre, one of the best sprinters uh, without doubt, John, we've had in South Australia for a long time. Yes, but very sad to see that and uh, the people that race him, uh, Mr and Mrs Simons, you know, it's uh, really sad for that to happen because they really love the horse and Bluey McIntosh as well. This is the third event, the Alban graduation. In the straight now, anybody's race where Arctic Moon swept up on the outside, Wise Force coming out it closer to the inside, Arctic Moon and Wise Force settling down to battle it out, and Right Gen coming after them on the outside, and then Ace Man, it's uh, Wise Force on the inside doing a shade better than Arctic Moon and starting to edge away, and Wise Force will win it, uh, or three parts of a length to Arctic Moon, third Right Gen, fourth Ace Man, then Ace Wise Force winning its uh, third race yesterday. It's quite a strong run. Arctic Moon looked as though he would possibly win when he got to the front, but the 57 was probably just the steadier. You know, Bert, those horses with 57 in grads find it hard, don't they? They do, yes. Uh, it's a real test at the finish. This is the Dahlia Stakes and the Great Christmas Trial by Spartan Queen. Mignon, this Miss Claus coming home fairly well from Tyrox, Dark Speckle and In Need. In the straight, Spartan Queen well clear, about two and a half in front of uh, Vegas Girl, not making much impression at the moment. Elitist running on and Ollie's Gem down the outside, 100 metres to go. Spartan Queen still about three in front of Vegas Girl. Ollie's Gem on the outside and Elitist and Spartan Queen, despite the big weights, got it well won. A real Cheltenham specialist and Spartan Queen goes down the line to win at four lengths to uh, Vegas Girl. Third Elitist, Ollie's Gem next on the outside. One year uh, John Vegas Girl, very honest, but Spartan Queen was just too good. Too good, Bert, and the time was very good for that race. Second outside the record and uh, with the conditions yesterday and the times they were running, that was an excellent run. Yes, very good Christmas trial. Finden, three-year-old novice now, race five. Uh, on the outside of it, joining it is Lord Lavelk, and they're followed by Lohai Ma coming home well on the outside of Pomp. Further back then to LABN in the centre, and then uh, uh, Darren Doll with Rolandis out wide, and then further back to Unreachable Star on the fence. In the straight, Lord Lavelk has headed off Dr George. Gypsy Marie on the outside is still there from LABN, Pomp and Lohai Ma. But in the straight, Lord Lavelk's got away from them. The 200 is about two, two and a half in front of LABN, Gypsy Marie and Lohai Ma running on strongly with Darren Doll and Pomp. But Lord Lavelle going like a winner with 50 or 60 metres to go. And Lord Lavelle wins at Ritten Hands and Heels about two lengths to LABN. An inch away third, low high mar, Darren Dolph. It was quite a good win, John, Lord Lavelle. Yes, Bert, he's been ridden up near the lead last time when he was in training, but this time being ridden back in the field, he's just developed well, and uh, he could go on to be a good little handicapper, that horse. Very good finish now in the Kempton handicap. Matter there to get her to the corner. Your lower's about two lengths away, third. Then uh, Astralex on the inside from Palm Springs, Domax, Welkin Light, and Lucky Sailor and Bone Noble. The last two, McLanelaw swept to the front in the straight, uh, gone about two in front of Laird's Manor. Your lower running on, and his Palm Springs down the outside. Astralex only plugging at the head of the others from Domax. McLanelaw in front, 100 metres to go. Your lower in the centre, the big challenger, put the head in front. The stable mate, Palm Springs, coming at it. It's Palm Springs, McLanelaw, uh, your lower rather, and your lower's won it about a head to Palm Springs brings the stable mate. Uh, third, uh, Domax. Well, it was a great go between the two uh, Hayes can candidates there. Palm Springs on the outside, Yolara on the inside, and a short half head in it. 
Palm Springs nearly got him at the finish, but a game win by the well-back favourite, Yaloa. Young Paul Dyson, the, the apprentice that rides Yaloa, Bert, he, uh, he looks after Yaloa up there. It's his favourite horse, and it yeah. gives him a great thrill to win on that horse every time yeah. that he does. And I'm uh, sure it's uh, even more favourite after yeah. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is the seventh Exeter Grad First Divvy. In front of Naples Bay and Dahism. Double privilege on the outside, Little Topar, and now Brave Symbol getting the run through between them. Brave Symbol going up to tackle and quickly got the nose in front. Brave Symbol, the leader from Dahism on the outside, Double Privilege and Aquanaut, and they're followed uh, further back then to Dakota Boy, but Brave Symbol has broken clear. Aquanaut battling on with Dahism, but Brave Symbol's won at about two lengths to Aquanaut second, a headaway third. Uh, um, um, down on the the uh, good win there by Brave Symbol. Uh, Dahism tried hard with his 57, but uh, I think the weight just a little bit uh, too much for him. But those horses just seem to go through the grades, Colin Hoses, don't they? You've got Magneto and uh, Gay Trevo. This mare could go on to big things. All right, his style is Shutton, uh, the lead around the turn in the last. Centigrade Randulla, they're followed by Overflyer from Tara Diddle and wider out Lord Vasco and Valley Echo. Coming to the 200, style is Shutton, holding him at bay. Overflyer getting it a second placing, Randulla third, and they're followed by Lord Vasco, Dunscotus and Valley Echo. Style is Shutton getting a bit tired, Overflyer gradually getting a bit, style is Shutton fighting back. Style is Shutton in front, Overflyer makes a dive at it but hasn't made it. And style is Shutton's won it by a half head or a short half head to Overflyer. Third, Lord Vasco, then Randulla. And it was a short half head only, Overflyer coming home very strongly and just failed to get the other one, but Stylish Sutton, who led all the way, uh, game effort there, just hanging on to win by a short half head. Racing yesterday, the Daily Double, uh, Lord Lavalk and uh, Brave Symbol, $6.30, Lord Lavalk and Dahism, the Consolation, $1.90, and the Fort Trilly yesterday for 11 Wise Force, 11 Lord Lavalk, 8 Gila and 13 Stylish Sutton, $620.85. and 85 cents. Well, racing uh, on Wednesday, John, we've got a meeting on Christmas Eve, which is probably a little bit unusual, but uh, Strathalban, um, they've got free buses leaving the central bus depot at 10 o'clock, uh, merry-go-round rides for the children, free sweets from Santa Claus and all the fun of Christmas at Strath on Wednesday. Big meeting at Strath again Wednesday, Bert, a lot of nominations and be big fields and good racing. It's always mm -hmm. a good track to go to too, Bert, it's always well grassed and a good running track. And Friday, of course, next Saturday, the Yolumba Port Cup at Cheltenham um, and... Um, Caulfield in Melbourne, Randwick in Sydney, and the Western Austra in Western Australia, the Australian Derby. Will that be televised, Bert? Um, I'm not quite certain. Uh, I think it but will be, yes. Mm. Yes, uh, that will be coming across. So well, that'll be a good one to see. And don't forget, of course, on Saturday is the Christmas Handicap. So it's Friday, your Lumber Port Cup at Cheltenham, Saturday, the Christmas Handicap, two very big days. Uh, we won't be with you next uh, Sunday because the Australian Open Tennis from Kuyong will be starting at 10.30, so no World of Sport racetrack. But um, on behalf of John and myself, a very happy Christmas to you all, and we'll see you on Sunday week. Fifties now and wide on the track at Char is one of the leaders with now a star papal bull going up quickly and bull jets in that pack too. Coming towards the crossing now, Queenwood on the inside, two lengths in front of Ira Hayes on the flat side, Firetron third. They're followed then by Boulders Brass over that crossing. The flat side looked to be in front. At Char down the outside of the track with Totonera there too. So is Papal Bull. Old time Jazz and now a star in that pack with Bull Jet. Onto the course proper and Queenwood two lengths clear now of Gallant Girl into second place at the 400 metre mark. Coming down the outside, they look to be struggling at Char's there. And with it is Papal Bull and Old Time Jazz. His 300 metres left to go now. Gallant Girl on the inside, but out wide on the track. Papal Bull had charged to the lead. At Char in second place, but it's Papal Bull well clear. Shadowway running on fairly well with Bull Jet. Papal Bull's about two lengths clear of Achar in second place and Bulljet running on, but the Papal Bull wins easily. Scores by three lengths, Bulljet. Achar may have got third from Old Time Jazz. The win there to Brent Thompson. Papal Bull starting favourite at 14 to 10, paying 105 on the win tote, 65 cents for the place. Bold uh, Jet second, 35 to 10, written incidentally by John Letts, paying $1.30, and Achar got up to run third at 12 to 1, paying $2.25. Racing today at Flemington concluded with the running of the rank Xerox stakes over the journey of 1,400 metres and the Colin Hayes team right on the mark. Running on with 900 metres left to go, Misty Vane in front from Javier led by about three parts of a length. It's fantastic covering ground, three wide blazing bags on the fence and then Tower Bell. Two lengths behind them, Classy Bell improving from what's in a name. Propaganda miss on the outside from Parisian Romp and then the grey snowflake. Hervel well back, followed by Foolproof, another grey. Lady Safarine second last around the bend with Nam Brook. Straightening up now, 500 metres left to go. Misty Vane on the inside, the leader from Javier. Brent Thompson has a peep over the shoulder to its fantastic third. 
Blazing Bags boxed up on the inside. Next followed by Tower Bell and Foolproof. 300 to go. Javier going nicely on the outside of Misty Vane. Now pokes a bit in front of Misty Vane. A length and a half away. Blazing Bags running home fairly well. They're followed then by Propaganda Miss. 150 left to go. Javier under the whip, the leader. Blazing Bags, a stable mate on the outside going. But oh, Javier stopped to a walk almost. Don't know what happened, but Blazing Bags won by a length and a quarter. Javier in third place, then down the outside, Parisian. Roy Higgins riding the last winner on Melbourne Cup Day on uh, Blazing Bags. Number one, starting 35 to 10, $2.20 and $1.20. Number two, Javier second, ran the favourite there, 25 to 10, $1.10. And number three, in third placing, Parisian Romp, starting at 8 to 1, paying $1.95. So in the handicapping way of one, two and three, racing today concluded at uh, Flemington on uh, Cup Day. Randy, what were your impressions of the runners in the last event? Well, uh, I was uh, happy to see Blazing Bags greet the judge after a long time of runabouts. Um, also, that horse from Adelaide, Golden Kingdom, yes, um, was quite impressive. Made up a lot of ground and wasn't far off the winner. Good to see Brent Thompson back in the uh, winning list following his injuries. Well, uh, any jockey that's been out for a while is uh, glad to get back in the winning list. Mm, true enough. Well, in a moment we'll be looking at Victoria Park, but first, again, this message. <laughs> really can't be sure just what's going to happen to you in the future. But you can be sure that no matter what does happen, you're covered. Covered by NHSA for whatever kind of medical and hospital care you choose. NHSA Personal Health Insurance. We're with you no matter what happens. NHSA. It's easy, easy at the TAB, so easy. Computer tap. TAB, take it easy when you feel like a flutter or a fling. Computer tap is the winning thing. It's easy, easy. We'll show you how, so easy. Computer tap. Try it now, take it easy, make a choice, pick a win or a place. Computer tap. Put you in the race, it's easy. Computer tab, you've got to be in it to win it, and now's the time to begin it. It's easy and it's fun. So easy. The success of the Colin Hayes stable continued at Victoria Park where the stable produced uh, three winners. Jim Courtney uh, rode one and stable apprentice Paul Dyson rode uh, two for the stable today. Racing open with the Naples, with, uh, Naples Bay taking the first event on the card at seven to one. Uh, the first of the Colin Hayes winners was Palm Springs in race number two starting seven to ten favourite. In the third race, open menu, uh, ridden by P. Dyson, got up at the odds of uh, 14 to 1. Randy, one horse that you rode early in the day is uh, Ginger Lad. This horse was doing well earlier in uh, 1980, but uh, doesn't seem to be able to find his form. No, just before I went to uh, Malaysia, uh, this horse uh, was doing everything right and winning very well, but uh, that just hasn't come in well, John. Fair enough. Well, the third race, as I mentioned, open uh, menu, the winner, at 14 to 1, then down to race... Uh, number four, and uh, this was the second leg of the four trailer, and here victory went to another tr uh, Colin Hayes trained horse in Bunkhouse. Uh, punters right on the mark, 15 to 10, and uh, favourite. Race uh, number five was the first leg of the TAB double today at Victoria Park, and now we pick up the latter stages. In the straight, 450 metres left to go and sail fast in front. Out with an advantage now of about uh, four to five lengths and doing it well too over Classic Flight. They were followed by Prince Patron running on only fairly. Uh, so daring down the outside of those and then came Young Mario but sail fast. Had a nice lead approaching the 200 metre mark. The rider Randy Suckling gave it one cut with a whip as Overflyer goes into second. Sail fast is getting tired with 100 metres left to go. Overflyer out after this leader followed by So Daring. Sail fast in front going down to the line but Overflyer on the outside doing better and Overflyer Flyers won it from sail fast. A young Mario third, followed by Prince Pate. Overflyer, ridden by Debbie Lloyd, 25 to 10, 2, 10 and 85 cents. Sail fast second at 10 to 1, 155. So daring third at 6 to 1, 95 cents. And uh, that was the uh, way that we saw the running of the first leg of today's double. Prince, uh, Prince Patron was the favourite at 22 to 10. Well, Randy, were you forced into the lead earlier than you anticipated there on sail fast? No, um, the instructions were if there was no pace on, don't pull the horse around because it's very field shy. Mm -hmm. um, I was quite happy. The horse had a very, very easy run from the gates. Um, but as it is, it turned out the horse has still got to come back another half a furlong <laughs> to try and win it's the race. counting the money there uh, oh, well. <laughs> halfway up the straight. Rock Show, again successful in the next event on the program at 3-1. to one, And now we take you back to the track 
uh, for the second leg of the TAB double today and here the favourite failed to run a placing. You've inside the final 400 metres and Kit Kat going up the Talisade and the pair of the matching strides clear of Acta Viva over on the inside. They were followed by Shindy Star coming home fairly and Senegrate at the head of the others. Talisade in front on past the 200 metre mark but here's Acta Viva out after this leader. Talisade in front. Acta Viva on the outside. The whips are flying. Talisade in front going down to the line and Talisade's got the money uh, going through on the inside. Look for gold. Possibly got second in advance of Acta Viva. They were followed then by... Uh, Talisade ridden by Matthews 8 to 1. $7.10, $1.30. Second uh, placing to find the gold. Came home at 50 to 1, paying 3.40 in third. Acrovita at 20 to 1, $2.50. And Kit Kat ran the odds on favourite, 8 to 10, out of a placing. Now we look at the doubles commencing today with the Melbourne double. In which for a run on the rails from Lady Value. Then came behind them St. Carolyn and Del Munda's got well out of it. In the straight, single century, nicely clear of Tarbisk pulling out to make the challenge from Nardine and Urana Star. It's still single century in front. Tarbisk gradually getting to it now. Tarbisk challenging single century, single century just in front. Tarbisk coming hard at it on the line. It's going to be very, very close. Oh, very nearly a dead heat. Single century and Tar Bisque with Nardine third. Then and the winner, the single century, by a short half head, 11 to 4 favourite from Tar Bisque and Nardine. In the second race, the favourite by now was never a possibility. On the turn and Long Swallow travelling well went up to join Derby Magic. By now's got a big job in front of her. Long Swallow took the lead from Derby Magic. Three lengths away then uh, came Megan Lass. By now can't win, followed by High Century. Long Swallow and Derby Magic fighting it out. There's nothing between them. And they're going stride for stride with Derby Magic kicking back, getting ahead in front near the line. And Derby Magic draws away to win by a length to Long Swallow. Coming home well third, Champers and Orange. And the winner there started at 15 to 1, the favourite by now at 9 to 4. In race 3, the two that were most heavily back were Bagpipes and Crown Man. King Hadrian ran right off the track and Crown Man got the split corridor poised just behind them and Scarlet Forge running on in the centre. In the straight, Bagpipes tackled by, now by Crown Man and Keep Fit. Corridor going for the inside run. At the 200, it's Crown Man and Bagpipes and Corridor getting up along the inside. Corridor on the inside, joined Crown Man and Bagpipes near the line, put its head in front and Corridor starting to draw away. Corridor came away to win by length the Crown Man. Third home, Bagpipes, then... The winner was at 8-1, to one, Crown Man 11-4 to four, and Bagpipes the favourite at 5-2. to two. In the fourth race, a wide betting affair with Pont Doro starting 7-2, to two, Public Fancy. Better Kingdom led with Sovereign Blaze, Pont Doro under the whip, Dominator. Blue Prelate going well, trying to get a run, and then Rockford and Trio's Hope. In the straight, Better Kingdom still in front from Sovereign Blaze. Blue Prelate getting up on the inside from Dominator. It's Better Kingdom in front, Blue Prelate picking it back with Sovereign Blaze. Sovereign Blaze doing a bit better than any of them, Drew Level. Sovereign Blaze out wide, and Blue Prelate the fence. Blue Prelate's going home best, and Blue Prelate won it. By a head to Sovereign Blaze, and nose away, Better Kingdom. The winner, Blue Prelate at 8 to 1, Sovereign Blaze 16s, Better Kingdom 8s, and Pontoro 7 to 2 favourite. The fifth race, and Maribyrnong River was back from 7 to 2 to 13 to 8. But Maribyrnong River's cleared away at the 400. He's three lengths in front. Woking went up to be second on the outside, followed by Lockray, Coronation Stone, Brashley, and Arunda. And behind them, Saxon Slew with 300 to go. Maribyrnong River still two and a half in front. Woking's picking him up quickly, and Saxon Slew is flying. Arunda trying to get out. Saxon Slew coming right over the top of them. And Saxon Slew swept to the lead with 100 to go. And it's going to walk in at the finish. A good win. Saxon Slew wins by more than three lengths. Woking second, a half head to Maribyrnong. Yes, and uh, just looking at Saxon Slew's performance here, an outstanding win, the trifecta there, 137.55. I know, Kevin, there were no Derby horses in the race, but it was hard not to be impressed with his victory. Well, that's his third win from, what, nine starts, I think, Bruce. He's a very promising horse. I had a look at him at Victoria Park the day he failed, and then when he came out and won. I think he's going to be a very handy horse, but if he measures into a top horse, I'll be surprised. What about on the breeding side, Kevin, from a staying point of view? He's by a former classic winner, Latin Knight. Yes, and he's not unlike uh, Latin Knight in looks. Uh, I would say that he'll get a mile and a half without any trouble, uh, but going beyond that, I would doubt it very much. I think his best distance would probably be 2,000 metres. And what about from a class point of view? Is he a horse that uh, could run well in a race like the AJC Derby? Well, he's got time to, he's, he's starting to work up to it and uh, Ranwick would suit him, a big track like that. But you've got to weigh the conclusions and say, is he as good as Real Force? Is he as good as Sovereign Red? Now, in the spring, our three-year-olds weren't outstanding until Sovereign Red emerged. We had so many different winners of each three-year-old race. All of a sudden, Sovereign Red 
took it out, won the Guineas, won the Derby, and went to the West and completed the Grand Slam with one exception. Uh, I doubt whether he's a great three-year-old. I think he's a top-class three-year-old in a very ordinary year. I don't think he's the champion that we had seen in previous years. Real Force, I think, will probably be a better racehorse than Sovereign Red in the autumn. Now, whether Saxon Slew measures up to their class, I doubt it very much. Interesting with Saxon Slew, uh, Colin Hayes has had some great three-year-olds in the past three or four years, a couple that come to mind, Dulcify and So Called. And So Called really blossomed at this time in the autumn. As a three-year-old, he had a great victory in the St. Ledger and was runner-up in the champion stakes. Well, now you've mentioned the ledger. I'd probably agree that he'd probably be a better ledger horse than a derby horse, and particularly our ledger here during the Adelaide Cup. I think that would be the race for Saxon Slew myself. I think the derby at Randwick might be too tough for him. Right, let's go back to Caulfield and see race six on the program, and here's a roughly a 200 to one chance. Approach the home turn and now makes a line of three in the straight Lascivia and it's fantastic to, together from Frida's Joy, Princess Miango getting clear and further back to Delhurst running on followed by Missy Brownskin but it's fantastic in front with just over 200 metres to go from Lascivia. Delhurst is running on down the outside with Princess Miango. It's fantastic in front. Delhurst trying hard on the outside. The leader stopping. It's fantastic. Held on to win by a head to Delhurst. Third home Princess Miango then... Well, somehow Delhurst poked its head out at the right time at one of the longest price winners ever in Victoria, 200 to 1, from its fantastic and Princess Miango. The seventh event, the Selby Welter and the favourite here, Trevset. Theo in the straight, Trevset swept to the lead out wide now from Consular. Uh, coming at them quickly, Manduria under the whip and then Wild. Look, it's Trevset in front. Manduria trying to wear it down. Consular still there. Trevset and Manduria having a battle. Manduria put its head in front of Trevset and Consular. And Manduria is coming away to win it. Manduria wins by two lengths. Uh, second placing Lee Rani from a long last. Consular third. Trev and the winner there, Manduria, well backed at 7-2, to two, and it was a dead heat for third, Consular and Trev set. Last race in the program, and punters tried to get out on Comic Chris. And Lawman is challenging on the outside of together. Comic Chris angling for a run between them with Prance of the outside. Gleaming Waters back on the fence. Out wide of Canella. Comic Chris has got a run as Lawman charged to the lead from Comic Chris. And Gleaming Waters is battling on with now a star with 100 to go. And it's Lawman in front. Gleaming Waters won't come out from behind them. And Lawman's drawing right away in the run home. Oh, it's a big win. Lawman by two and a half lengths to Comic Chris. Now a star third. Gleaming Waters. The winner, Lawman, 20 to 1. First up since running third in the Cox Plate back in November. And the trifecta there, $922. Well, Kevin, certainly an outstanding run there by Lawman. He's well-bred as well by Boucher, an English horse who was a, a classic winner. Having his first start for 14 months, Lawman, he ran third to Dulcify and Chivalry in the Cox Plate at his last run. And I'd say he's a horse who could win a major race through the autumn. Without a doubt, Bruce, only good horses come back from long layoffs and win open sprints. And I think that uh, had Lawman remained sound as a three-year-old, he probably would have gone on and won his derby. Uh, unfortunately, as Bill Collins just said, he had the knee injury after the Cox played third, and he was off the scene for that period. He's in a great stable. Uh, he's bred to stay any distance. And looking at his action, I think he's got the, the scope to go right through the autumn and be a top horse. Well, he ran 110.7 yesterday, and talking about being in a top stable, what a great training feat by George Hannon to produce a horse after so long and after an injury and have him fired up and ready to win. Well, George has been around a long time, Bruce, and uh, when you think of the great horses he's had, uh, it's not unusual for uh, George to produce them on the right day. And well, he may not be a family of man, he may not replace family of man, but he mightn't be far short. Uh, well, I never thought family of man was a champion. I thought he was a good horse. I think the title, uh, we use the title champion too easily in the media. Uh, I think family of man was a great stake winner, a great horse, but never a champion in my opinion. Let's have a look at the multiple forms of doubles and treble, or rather the double yesterday at Mel Med Melbourne. We'll get that right. Saxon Slew, Manjuria, new boy on the job here, 11.85. <laughs> Saxon Slew and Lee Rani paid $102.50 yesterday in Melbourne. Well, certainly an interesting uh, program in Melbourne, but I thought we had just as good a program here in Adelaide. And after this break, we'll come back and have a look at the action, including that sensational fall in the first event on the program from Cheltenham. Ern Smith's good people to do with. Ern Smith's good people to see. There's an incredible range of Sanyo products for you to choose from at Ern Smith's Electric Supermarket. Stereo systems, colour TV, home appliances and much more, all at the best prices in town. See Ern Smith's first for Sanyo. Ask their experts for help and advice. Play on easy terms if you wish. Ern Smith's have the biggest range at the best prices. Ern Smith's, good people to see. Walls that are cracked and in need of repair need a fibre charm facelift. 
Fiber Charm, the new interior finishing material that gives you a smooth, professional finish every time. There's very little preparation. Just mix Fiber Charm with water, trowel it onto any surface, brick, wood, plaster or gyproc, minor cracks are easily covered. You'll be pleased with the results you get. Fiber Charm is available in an extensive range of exciting decorator colors and textured finishes. See Fiber Charm for yourself at the Fiber Charm showrooms, 206 Hutt Street, Adelaide. Well, we've certainly got an exciting time in racing in South Australia at the moment. Not very far off the national yearling sales once again. Also the opening of the stand at Morpherville and uh, we'll be going back to racing at Morpherville very shortly. Kevin, of course, you've been closely connected with the, the goings-on with the grandstand at Morpherville. How is progress going? Spot on, Bruce. It's um, running right to schedule. The grandstand will be completed next month. Uh, the improvements to the course proper have been completed and we'll be ready to resume racing on Wednesday, March 25 at Morpherville. It's going to be a great day that when we resume, mate. That's for sure, and of course <laughs> it's only about uh, six weeks before the Adelaide Cup Carnival. That's true. Our carnival, uh, we've got the three days set down for May 9, May 16 and May 18, and we're going to announce very, very shortly, within the next week or so, the final plans for the Adelaide Cup, and I think they'll please everyone. Increased stake money. We've got a meeting, a committee meeting on January 16, when we just tie up some of the loose ends of what we're going to do with the carnival, and then we'll be ready to make an announcement. And of course, uh, there's been quite a bit of work done on the course proper since we raced last at Morpherville. How's that work going? That's going very well, and that rain that we had Friday night was a blessing, Bruce, because when you've got extremely hot weather, you've got a growing uh, grass such as the Kaikuya, we wanted that rain because natural rain is so much better than the ordinary watering. I would say uh, we're right on time with that. Every jockey that I've ever spoken to who's come from interstate that rides at Morfordville tells me it's one of the best tracks they've ever ridden, ridden on because of the layout, Bruce. It's, it's, the turns are excellent. It's a flat track. Now, having looked at the improvements they've made, it's even going to be better. So I'd say it's going to be one of the glamour tracks of the racing carnivals around Australia. And we've improved the last 800 metres. Now, the run is superb. Horses can come from last and still win at Morfordville. And, of course, another exciting thing coming up is a computerised tote at Morfordville. Well, that's the best thing that I've ever been associated with uh, at the Jockey Club. I've had a look at the working of it, Bruce, and boy, is it going to revolutionise punting. It's the best tote in Australia. It's improved, it's identical to the system in Sydney, but it's got added innovations. For that reason, it's been built specially for South Australia. As you know, we've got a different set of rules here in racing. Uh, we have consolation in daily doubles and slightly with the substitutes, so therefore we, our tote had to be brought up to date and it is the best and most efficient I've ever seen. Now for the media, we're having a special day on Tuesday, January 27. We're going to run a mini race meeting without horses. We're going to have films. You boys are going to have the chance to back trifectas, quinellas, whatever you like. There'll be a few prizes for you. And the idea will be to show you how efficient this machine is. And I tell you what, the day it opens at racing at Cheltenham on February 11, be there to see how popular it'll be. Who's supplying the money that day, Kevin? <laughs> well, the day we're having the media, I'm having dummy money for you fellas. I don't trust you with uh, true money. But seriously, uh, it is the best tote system I've ever seen, and I've seen it in every state. And this one, the AWA computer tote, specially built and designed for the jockey club, is going to change the whole form of betting. You'll have a trifecta on every Adelaide race, a Quinella on every Sydney race, every Melbourne race, Adelaide race. Now, the system is so geared that we could have a trifecta on every Melbourne race and every Sydney race, as well as Adelaide. But we won't do that initially because there won't be that pool of money to warrant running a trifecta on every race in Sydney and Melbourne. So what we'll do when we open, we'll have a trifecta on every Adelaide race and we'll have the trifectas that coincide with the TAB trifectas on Sydney and Melbourne. And when the pool builds up and the crowds come back and the money's there, we'll start thinking about putting trifectas on every race in Sydney and Melbourne. You can imagine what that'll do to racing. Well, it's certainly going to mm. be a great incentive to go to the track and uh, we're in for an exciting time in racing in South Australia in the next couple of months leading up to the opening of Morpherville. Well, we had racing yesterday at Cheltenham, a spectacular fall in the first event of the program. Let's go to the track, have a look at the fall, and then we'll show it to you in slow motion after uh, the completion of the race. As they run down the side and approaching the uh, third last jump here at the 600 metre point, and Warrior to Warriors jump to the lead. Warrior to Warriors gone almost three parts, but Moravian won't be uh, won't be beaten. He's pushing through on the inside again. Just behind those Sharas are followed by Prince Gallant, Drover Jack. Behind those Lord Ollie and Ost Astral King as they swing into the straight with about 300 metres to go. And as Warrior to Warriors, Sharas are wider out. Drover Jack as they come to this jump. There's about six or seven of them. Moravian there. Lord, Lord Ollie looking for a way through on the inside. Here's the last jump. Sharas has gone. Oh, one has crashed. Oh, one has crashed right in front of them. Prince Gallant came over, drove a jack. 
plenty of interference here where Shahrazad's got to the lead from Lord Ollie, Warrior out of Warrior, and Astral King and Wee Spy. But Shahrazad's going to win it by about uh, lengths and a quarter. Second place. Yes, Shahrazad successful in the first event at eight to one, uh, defeating Lord Ollie at 45 to 10, and Astral King at seven to one. Let's go back and have a look at this in slow motion, this race coming up, this forward drover Jack Falls coming to the last and Prince Gallant's behind it. Uh, the two riders, uh, Kavanagh, uh, the jockey of Prince Gallant behind Paul Shepherdson, the driver of drover Jack. Now, down goes drover Jack. And just have a look at this horse, Prince Gallant, go over the top of Paul Shepherdson and uh, well, very, very fortunate there, Kevin, that uh, Paul Shepherdson has escaped with minor injuries. Yes, I'm very pleased, uh, Bruce. I was talking to Paul's wife this morning and uh, Paul's home, he's not in hospital, he's pretty sore. Uh, but he's OK and he's on the way back to recovery. But out of that fall, you'd say that he'd come out with a broken shoulder or collarbone arm or whatever you like. But uh, they're pretty tough jumping jockeys. They certainly yeah. are. And that's great news about Paul Shepherdson. In the second event, a top ride by John Stocker and Harlan Gypsy at 9 to 1. The favourite bowl console, a little disappointing. 600 per vein is there with consoles, Cato Men. Uh, one of the last uh, there as they swing towards the home turn is Dry Storm and back with it Fearless Escort. As they swing into the straight, 400 to go and Highland Gypsy is the leader from on the outside, uh, Echo Molly. In third placing, Darlenia behind those, followed by Emma's Joy. Tony the Gent Bold Consul, I don't think, can win past the 200, where Highland Gypsy is the leader and is being challenged by Darlenia about a length or so away. Down the outside, Tony the Gent, followed by Emma's Joy but Highland Gypsy here's on the outside Darlenia coming at it Highland Gypsy just in front all very close Darlenia may have beaten it in the last stride the uh, bobs of the, of the head will tell in Jay Stocker Kevin a very balanced rider one of the best you'll ever see in our time uh, Bruce he's a great rider and uh, he gets better every day I see him he's got that gift of being a champion jockey he can class be classified as a champion Monarchy he is a champion Playboy, race three Monarchy Playboy 28 to 10 the favorite unlucky Pasami at 25 to 10 Nola Butt followed uh, wider out there by Classic Rule and also assertive miss in that bunch, Divine Choice. Uh, behind those, Scar Panto, Neptune Princess has lost ground on the inside from Steel of Romance going places. Pasami is well back at this stage with Golden Revet and back with them too there would be uh, over a beer and one of the last whispering crown. With about 2.50 to go and Monarchy Playboy's given them the slip past the 200 now. Monarchy Playboy gone about four or five in front, Scar Panto, Pasami coming home with Neptune Princess but Monarchy Playboy Playboy's going to be too good, and Monarchy Playboy goes on and wins by two and a half lengths to Neptune Princess, uh, who was doing its best work at the finish. Uh, yes, the second horse will be set for the Blood Horse Breeder Stakes, Kevin, which is coming up shortly. That comes up on January 31, Bruce, and the entry's closed for that race tomorrow, and I understand there'll be some Victorian entries lodged at the same time, so local trainers, don't forget, it's nominations for the Blood Horse Breeders tomorrow. Top right here, Kay Callow and Laird's Manor in race four. Laird's Manor leads by about four lengths as they swing into the straight. Uh, by uh, about four in front of Rangers, Sun, you lower on the outside, Sunny Sostein, Domax, and then Gay Element. But Laird's Manor, he's gone for home on it past the 200. Uh, still about three or four in front. I don't think they're going to get him either. And I think uh, smart riding has stolen the day here. Laird's Manor in front. Sonny Sostein, uh, Yaloa and Ranger Sun coming at him, but it's going to be too late. And a smart ride by Kay Callow. Laird's, Laird's Manor, the winner by about three parts. Sonny Sostein second, close for third. May have been Yaloa. Yes, he's developed into a very handy horse up one, Laird's Manor. A son of Mikado who's done well at the stud. And uh, he's going well at the moment, Kevin. Well, he was fortunate that he didn't have another horse with enough pace to worry him. He had it uh, made to order, and Kev Callow did ride him superbly. Race five on the program, open menu, 18 to 10 favourite. I thought the stable mate ran very well, Arctic Moon at two to one. Is Arctic Moon, which has come from near last. He's coming quickly towards the leaders. Behind those wise force, followed uh, then at the head of the others by Captain's Mate as they swing into the straight with about 3.50 to go. And Valdemar, the leader, tackled by Valinaro on the outside. Open Moon, you wider out. Arctic Moon is coming at them quickly now. Arctic Moon down the outside might have got to the stable mate. Open Moon, you pass the 200. Arctic Moon wide on the track. Yes, he's gone past Open Moon, you which is fighting back. Arctic Moon and Open Menu, nothing in it. Arctic Moon has been headed by Open Menu on the inside. And Open Menu came back to win it by about a long neck. Arctic Moon. Yes, a ding dong go there. Open Menu could be a chance in a race like the St. Ledger Stakes. He's the type that'll measure up as a stayer, Bruce. You're quite right. He's the right type of three year old at this time of the year. He's coming good. And a wise force is racing well in third place in the trifecta, $15.15. .15. Military Rule, who's been schooling over the hurdles during the week, 11 to 1. Spartan Queen evens in favour. Towards a turn, just before the 500 metre point, Military Rule about four in front of Spartan Queen. His emblem boy racing into third placing, moves quickly up on the outside. 
Lavadina behind those, followed by Morris and then Prince Japalia. But as they race into the straight 300 to go and flatten out for the run, military rule the leader. Here's Spartan Queen out after it in second placing, followed by Lavadina and Emblem Boy down the outside. Military rule just in front. Here's Spartan Queen coming at it quickly. It's military rule. Spartan Queen, I don't think, is going to make it. Military rule just in front. Spartan Queen's not going to get it. And military rule has led all the way and won it by a half a length to Spartan Queen. Emblem Boy was third. Morris is obviously the schooling has done military rule good. Hasn't hurt him, Bruce, but uh, he's by abdicating, and abdicating had three winners yesterday, and in his three wins, he quinella the race twice. He had it with Highland Gypsy and Delina, then Monarchy Playboy, and then Military Rule beat Spartan Queen, who's also by abdicating. Now, that's a very, very good sign, and uh, it's the right omen for the yearling sales coming up here in, in February. I'd call that good timing. Good timing for abdicating. <laughs> Race seven on the program, the second leg of the double, like a dancer, 35 to 10. Hendon appeared to have every chance, seven to 10 in favour of the grey horse. Ground now, behind those Inman Princess, back there, Laird's Kingdom from Sun Talon. Also, there is Oblomov, and following those is Diamond Shadow. Uh, Ty Rose is back with those, and also back there is Von Putkam with Uriah. With about 2.50 to go, and like a dancer has gone for home. He's after the winning post. Now Like a Dancer's kicked away a couple in front. Hendon and Balkan Secret out after it. It's Like a Dancer in front. Balkan Secret and Hendon coming at it. Like a Dancer just in front. And Like a Dancer has won narrowly. May have been Balkan Secret second. Uh, third placing Hendon. There wasn't much. Two wins in succession. And uh, Stephen Davies beating Dad in a thrilling finish. And not only that, he's, he's, he's a very good rider with a whip, this young boy. He's, he's a natural left-hander, I believe, Bruce. And you saw how well he wielded the whip in the right hand. He can use it with the left and the right. And that's a great advantage for Apprentice. And he does ride them in stride, hits them in stride, I should say. Race eight on the program, Hot Mum, a 28 to 10. This was a first class effort. With pleasure, ran very greenly, 15 to 10 and favourite. Point Opera is back there too. And uh, back with those then would be uh, King of Dola. And also back Star Vixen, one of the last with Bold Centaur as they swing into the straight. With about 300 to go, Hot Mama's the leader, but With Pleasure is about to race up and tackle as they head in past the 200. Hot Mama just the leader, With Pleasure inclined to get its head in the air in second placing out after this leader. Justification third from Kind of Cute. Hot Mama in front, With Pleasure's trying to get on terms with it, but he won't get on with the job. And Hot Mama's going to win it almost a length to With Pleasure, race with the head in the air in the last 200. About five lengths away. Yes, with pleasure, did run greenly. Kevin, there was a horse in that race that you probably didn't even see on the, on the screen, Yolanova, but she made up a lot of ground, and I think she'll come back a fairly handy mare. Yolanova was a fair performance. She finished in the middle of the field and made up a ton of ground. I'll watch it closely, Bruce, to see what a good judge you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not much of a judge. Of course, stock of the ride of hot mama. $6.95 has come out. Uh, Magneto and Vane Papa in particular. Colin Hayes had a great day in Victoria with Ron Lee Bis being successful. Magneto and Planned Escape training a treble. I have with me at the moment Bob Robertson. Bob, of course, very well known to everybody, the executive director of the Australian Breeders Cooperative, amongst a lot of other things, well-known punter, owner, and uh, certainly a racing uh, fan extraordinaire. Well, Bob, yesterday, Magneto uh, looked very, very imp impressive in winning the straight six event, and I'd say on that performance, he must be a chance in races like the Oakley Plate, and in particular, the Newmarket Handicap. Yeah, I'd agree, Bruce. He, he's a uh, very lightly raced to us. He's a five-year-old, but he's only had about a dozen starts. And that time yesterday, 1.93 is a sensationally good time for 1,200 metres. So he, I don't know what, what the stable plans are, but if he's still around at uh, Newmarket time, he's got to be right in there. Probably an interesting comparison would be to compare him with Sportscast, who was a young horse who ran in races such as the Lightning Stakes in the Newmarket this time last year and did, did measure up to the top class. Yes, well, I mean, I don't think uh, Sportscast did a run any better than um, Magneto's last year. And uh, that was a top-class field. Comic Chris Rooney, I mean, Zegner, top horses. And I, I thought it was a really outstanding run for also having a second start. I was a bit wary of him at 1,200 metres at Flemington because he let us down there once before. To me, he's more... The horse is really more a 1,400-metre horse. But he's just... I reckon that's improved two or three lengths on anything he showed last year, Bruce. What about a race like the Marlborough Plate for him, Bob? Uh, freshen up, come back... Uh, Morphville would suit him, wouldn't it? Yeah, we set fortune favours for that. <laughs> don't, don't give them ideas. Uh, <laughs> but do you think I, I, no, he's a, he'd be a perfect horse for Morphville because he's a strong miler and that's what you need for Morphville. The other outstanding performance appeared to be in the Mollison handicap. Vane Papa has run very fast time, 57.9. Your impressions of that horse? Well, I, I think Vane Papa is, is um, as good a two-year-old as we've seen in Australia this year. Uh, and that time was outstanding. It's a wonderful thing for Hunker Papa because he's now had four winners, uh, winners in four states, which is an incredible effort at, uh, in, in, in January to have done that already. 
Uh, Vane Pepper I'm terribly impressed with. I think he's a really top horse. I think he's the best blue diamond prospect in Australia by a long way. And don't underestimate the second horse because I, I think he's got an enormous future too. In fact, it was a real... I don't want to get this plug in. It was a real triumph for, for the Australian Breeders' Cooperative because the first horse in the Mollison, it was the best two-year-old race I reckon we've seen in Melbourne this year. It, it eclipsed anything we, we saw in the spring. The winner was, was Vane Papa, was by Hunker Papa from Banneter, and, and we know the terrific success Hunker Papa's going. Banneter has got a lovely filly by K. Star in the sale, and, and you know, I think it'll be certainly as good as uh, the top price lot probably in the sale. Uh, second was Fearless Pride, who we saw also, the Hunker Papa, uh, Vane Papa was sold at the sales. Um, Fearless Pride, who ran second, was sold at the sales, and he's a, he's a magnificent prospect. You know, they won't beat him in the sales produce. Uh, Copper Rocket was by Habeas Corpus, and it's good to see Habeas Corpus coming up with another good horse. I thought Copper Rockets was an outstanding run. That ran third, that was sold at the sales. Fifth was a, a, a horse by Schiffmar having its first start, and a terrific r uh, run, and, and uh, there's a, a full, full relation in this, a full um, blooded relation in the sale also by Schiffmar. Well, those horses are certainly going to create a great deal of interest. Let's go to the track and see the action in the first event. Pillar 2, in fact, met the the favourite sound off on very good weight terms and it was no surprise to see it win. Let's go to Flemington for all the races yesterday in Victoria. Two. Into the straight, sound off three lengths in front. Second is Pyrie, Viv's choice. He's getting up on the fence about fifth with pillar two. Oh, he nearly fell. He has fallen. He's clipped the heels of Pyrie, Viv's choice, and now Pyrie's fallen too. The boys are okay. Sound off in front. Pillar two grabbing him at the last. Here they draw to it. Pillar two jumped it in front of sound off. Royal offer. Then Languna, who stumbled through it. And pillar two's coming home to win a sensational hurdle race. Pillar two is going to win by about five lengths. Sound off second. Languna's finishing fast along the inside in a battle for third money. Won't get it. Royal Offer got out a nose in front of Pillar 2. Uh, the winner, Pillar 2, at sixes. Sound off fours. Royal Offer 14s. And Viv's Choice 5 to 2 favourite. In race two, it was a cakewalk for Ronley Bisque. And Ronley Bisk cantered up to uh, Spoil Judge. Then Soft Crossing with on the outside of them. Janetta under the whip. This is under double wraps, this favourite. Uh, Red Charisma's making a run down the outside, but Thompson hasn't let go yet. He'll want to in a minute. Soft Crossing's coming at it quickly. Now he goes on Ronley Bisk. It draws away a length in front. He's had to pull the whip straight. Melody's running on fairly, but Ronley Bisk starting to draw away with 150 to go. And the favourite's home. Red Charisma in second place from Straight Melody and battling on Soft Crossing. But Ronley Bisk won by two and a half lengths to Red Charisma, soft crossing third, fourth straight. And the winner there at 10 to 9 on in favourite. In the Talon Dirt handicap, Comely Kitten having its first start was favourite at 7 to 4. Past the 500 and Comely Kitten's been joined on all sides by Cool Flip and Prioress has got up on the rails. It's headed them all off. Uh, Villa's looking for a run and has got it if it's good enough and Darling Take Care joining them on the outside with Petite Paragon. Darling Take Care has swept to the lead at the 300 with Petite Paragon under the whip out after it. They've raced well clear of Comely Kitten and Urana Star. Darling Take Care a half in front and holding the other one Petite Paragon at bay and then Urana Star and Darling Take Care much too good. Goes on to win by a length from uh, Petite Paragon. Close for third, uh, Villa might have got up and snatched third on the line from Urana Star. Little unlucky our Villa, it got crowded a little near the 500 but there was plenty of room there and it couldn't accelerate quickly enough just beforehand. Great ride by Roy Higgins here when Burbing again coming from last looked as though it was going to beat the favourite Moronton Bay. Higgins trying to ease off on Morant and Bay has done so quite easily now. And out wider now, Noble Yen putting in a run and Burbing again starting to come home along the inside rail, but he'll need a bit of luck. Morant and Bay tackling Lavaro there together with Noble Yen and Burbing again behind them is trying to get a run. He's full of running, Burbing again. Morant and Bay got the lead uh, from Lavaro, but Burbing again's got through on the fence. Morant and Bay in front of Burbing again and our misty cloud. Morant and Bay's holding Burbing again as they get near the line and Morant and Bay He's going to win about three parts of a length. Burbing again. A head away third. Rockford from our Misty Cloud, Lavara. Burbing again just weakening on its run in the last hundred metres of the race. The Brian Courtney handicap was a thriller with the favourite Zegna. Manoroa, Comic Chris and Magneto still three in line. Zegna's being called on for its effort. Rooney's badly blocked for a run at the 400. They were followed then by Equatorial and Canella. Magneto's going better than Comic Chris and Manoroa at the moment. Took the lead with Zegna trying to get out after them on the outside. Rooney still can't get a run. It's Magneto in front of Comic Chris fighting back. Zegna under the whip from Rooney. He's had to go for the whip on Magneto. Comic Chris sticking with him well clear of Rooney and Zegna. Magneto ahead in front. Comic Chris desperately biting back but... Uh, 
uh, it's still Magneto and it's one. Magneto drew away and won it nearly half a length on the line to Comic Chris. Rooney got third ahead in front of... Gee, Bob, I like the way Magneto stretched out his neck in the last little bit and went to the line strongly, and it was hard not to be impressed by him. Yes, he's very impressive, Bruce. It's beautifully bred. He's not only bow without fear, he's from Coyle, and that's uh, in those fam uh, the relation to all those lovely mares of Sir Alec Kresic. And uh, there's a whole lot of them coming over to the side by, or side by Aurealis. And he's, so it's not surprising he's good as he is, because he's got a magnificent family behind him. And it'll be very interesting to watch Magneto's pro uh, progress throughout the autumn. Right, here's a Mollison handicap, some top-class two-year-olds, Vane Puffer, 11 to 10 favourite. Going together by two lengths to Copper Rocket. In fourth placing, Fearless Pride running on, then a gap to Limber Up, followed by Chosen Land, Espana and Dream Prince. But Vane Papa moved up to tackle Cabrica near the 200 metre mark and took the lead. It's Vane Papa, a half length in front of Cabrica. They're three in front of Fearless Pride running on. Vane Papa in front, Fearless Pride starting to storm home. But Vane Papa clear near the line is going to hold on and win. Vane Papa by length to Fearless Pride. Third home, Copper Rocket just ahead of... Yes, 57.9 and uh, a great run by the winner, first class run by the runner-up and also a very promising run by the third horse. I was talking to Kevin Sattler at the races yesterday, uh, Bob, he made the statement, he was talking to Joe Hall on Thursday and he told Joe that of all the two-year-olds he's seen over the years, he thinks that Vane Pup is the best since Vane and Pago Pago. Well, I think he's a very good horse. I, I doubt whether he's that good, but Kevin Sattler's a good judge and uh, when he says something, you've got to take a bit of notice. Yes, well, I, I'm terribly impressed with Vane Papa. I mean, it's, it's terribly hard to compare from one year to another. Um, Is he as good as desirable? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I doubt it, but I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> but, but, for example, Desirable ran 57.7 with 59.5 and, and winning the talent dirt. But I, th I think this is a top two-year-old, so I wouldn't want to make, <laughs> make comparisons. I'd love to own Vane Papa, I can assure you. I'm terribly impressed with the second one, I might end. And you think you obviously think Fearless Pride's a horse that'll run very well at Flemington. Well, he's, he's a different style of horse. I couldn't see him beating Vane Pupper in the Blue Diamond. I think Blue, uh, Vane Pupper will just have too much speed. But I, I think in a race like the size project, it'd be pretty interesting. Well, Colin Hayes had a great day yesterday. Let's see him win his third race at Flemington with planned escape. Nursed in the straight from Bolshatain and Sturk at them. Uh, Gallant's back to the outside. Blackmark's now having trouble getting a run from Pagan King and Paddy Fox. Planned escape holding them at the 200 from Sturk. Blackmark getting out now. He's running on fairly, but planned escape clear of Sturk. On the outside, Gallant Spectre and Blackmark from Pagan King. Blackmark's coming hard. Planned escape in front. Blackmark going two to its one near the line, but planned escape will hang on and win. Planned escape about a neck to Blackmark and a nose to Sturk. The winner planned escape was Colin Hayes' seventh training winner for the day, four in Adelaide and three in Melbourne. And it was a Colin Hayes horse that was favoured in the last. Arabinong River's got a big break at the 400. He's two and a half in front of Super Track under the whip. Woking running home fairly from Show Me Love. It's Maribyrnong River clear with 200 to go. Super Track gradually getting to him, but not fast enough from Woking. At the 150, Maribyrnong River in front. He's stopping Super Track and Woking the danger. Woking the outside and Super Track getting to Maribyrnong River. Woking's going home the best. Put its head in front and Woking's got up the win. Super Track just got second. A nose in front of Maribyrnong River. And the winner working seven to one. Yes, and let's have a look at the daily doubles. Magneto planned escape, the CS Hayes double, 775. Magneto black mark, $4.20. Well, we're certainly at a very exciting time, Bob. Only a week and a bit to go before the reappearance, we hope, of Manicato at Mooney Valley in the William Reed Stakes. It's uh, hard to say, I know, Grey Sapphire's racing particularly well, but if Manicato can come back to his best, he should dominate the short weight for age races. Yes, well, he, he's in a class of his own, Manicato, and, and uh, although I've got a lot of time for Grey Sapphire, I couldn't see him beating Manicato if Manicato's right. But he's had a long let off, and he's an older horse, and I don't know if you've noticed, but as horses get older, they often don't come up first up as well as they do when they're younger. And so, um, uh, it's probably, Manicato's not over the line, I think it'll be a very interesting race. I think the Autumn Carnival is interesting because of the fact that I'm sure we're going to see another champion emerge, uh, no Kingston Town through the autumn. Manicato, as you said, getting older and possibly past his best and will obviously be kept for the shorter races and won't have too many races. And I think we'll probably see a three-year-old come through the ranks in the autumn and become a very exciting horse. I, I hope so, Bruce, because, frankly, the three-year-olds so far have been a little bit disappointing. I mean, Sovereign Red, you couldn't do more than he's won all the races he has, but he, they've been, in my view, that was uh, probably the weakest derby field we've had in years. Uh, it was certainly the weakest Australian derby we've had in many years. I mean, it wouldn't live with some of the derbies I can remember 
um, back a couple of years ago. So really, uh, although he's a nice horse sovereign red, and I wouldn't want to knock him out, I'd love to own and have won all the prize money he's won. He's not, in my view, in anything like the class of Kingston Town or some of the top three-year-olds we've seen. So I'd, you know, I'd like to see a good three-year-old come along. I don't think we've seen it yet. Well, the William Reed State's coming up in about eight days' time at Mooney Valley and will certainly be a great race. We'll be back in a moment talking about the cooperative yearling sales coming up and also all the great racing at Cheltenham yesterday here in Adelaide. There's an incredible range of Sanyo products for you to choose from.